A new report from ESPN's Todd McShay could be a game changer for the New York Jets. That's what we're talking about in today's Jake Asbitt show. So let's hit it and get it started. Hit it! Welcome to Draft Week. The New York Jets select the Brickish Show. The Brickish Show. Quarterback. Quentin Williams. Zach Wilson. Quarterback. BYU. When was the last time the Jets had an elite pass rusher? If he's there, take him. Don't overthink it. Take the guy. You got to help Zach Wilson with this draft class. It begins and ends there. With the 10th pick. If Zach Wilson's not any good, none of this matters. If he's there, run to the podium. Smash the like button. Hit subscribe. If you want to talk draft? Super chat, baby. Cut the line. You're not going to want to miss a second of the cover. The time is now. The pick is in. Who are the New York Jets selecting? Let's hit it. Here we go, talking all things Jets. Second video of the day. If you missed it earlier, Will Parkinson, turn on the Jets, was on the channel. We covered the Debo Samuel rumors. We covered the pressure on Joe Douglas. Check that out if you want more Jets content. I wanted to pop on with another video today because I just read a very interesting report from ESPN's Todd McShay, and I believe this could directly impact the New York Jets. Before I tell you about the report, I do want to share that we're doing a jersey giveaway. You could win a Jets jersey for free, and all you have to do is go to busr.com slash asman to be entered in the contest. You make the minimum deposit. You're in. You're signed up. And you pick the jersey. Any player the Jets take in the first round, or if they do trade for Debo Samuel, we'll send you a Debo Samuel jersey as soon as it's available in the New York Jets jersey shop on the website. So busr.com slash Asman. BUSR is my official sports book. They should be yours too. Bet on the draft, bet on baseball, hockey, NBA playoffs, boxing, UFC, whatever you want to bet on, check it out, busr.com slash Asman. So the report from Todd McShay, very interesting. Todd McShay says that Tyler Linderbaum, George Karloftis, and N'Kobe Dean could fall out of the first round. Specifically, he notes three prospects I've heard who could fall out of round one, Georgia linebacker N'Kobe Dean, Purdue defensive end George Karloftis, and Iowa center Tyler Linderbaum. Dean is the most likely of the trio to still be a first rounder. Let me say this. If the Jets somehow end up with Tyler Linderbaum and they don't have to trade back into the first to get him, that's the equivalent of somehow Elijah Moore being on the board for the Jets with pick 34 last year. This would be truly remarkable if Linderbaum is there for the Jets in the second round. I mean, you talk about locking up your center position, essentially, for the next 10 years. Just crazy what you could do. Connor McGovern has no guaranteed money on his contract, so you could easily waive him. It feels too good to be true that Linderbaum would be there at 35, but hey, if McShay's saying it, you never know. And then the other two players, N'Kobe Dean, wouldn't he be amazing at 35? Let's say Linderbaum's not there. At 35, I'd love N'Kobe Dean. Hell, George Karloftis if he's there. I'd love him too. I just think there's such a demand for pass rushers, though. I still think Karloftis ends up going in the first round when push comes to shove, but this is irrelevant and certainly worth noting that McShay is saying this because he's connected to all these different teams in the league, including, by the way, the New York Jets. Todd McShay's roommate at Richmond University, Jets GM Joe Douglas. And in McShay's column, it was an ESPN Plus exclusive column, he talks about the different things that he's heard, you know, the, the different rumors that are out there, team strategies, and I thought this was an incredible takeaway here that these three notable players could fall out of the first round for a variety of different reasons. You know, scheme fit, um, you know, premium at position. Like, if you don't need a center, you're probably not going to take Linderbaum in the first round. And if you don't run a zone scheme, zone blocking scheme, you're probably not going to take Linderbaum in the first round. Well, the Jets run a zone blocking scheme. So Linderbaum is perfect for what they could use on their offensive line. So, to me, if I could only pick one of these three to get, it would be Linderbaum. Now, there's a lot of factors here, though, right? The Jets, obviously, are in the mix for Debo Samuel. 
it probably will cost, if they don't trade number 10, both their twos to get Debo. A move on four, by the way. But if they don't get Debo, the consolation prize of maybe one of these players falling to you in the second round or having that flexibility to move into the first round if one of these players start to slide and you covet them, I'd love it. I could see Linderbaum being a trade-up candidate. I could see N'Kobe Dean being a trade-up candidate. I think they're going to go Thibodeau at four, so I don't think they would trade up for Karloftis. But if he somehow were to slide to the second round, I think the Jets could double up on edge and no Jet fan would be upset with that. Like, imagine a scenario where your defensive line next year is somehow Kayvon Thibodeau, Carl Lawson, George Karloftis, and so then up the middle you got JFM, you got uh, Quinn and Williams, you signed Jacob Martin, who I think is going to surprise some Jet fans as a situational pass rusher. You brought back Vinny Curry for some veteran depth. You have Bryce Huff. Like, you have a really good defensive line that you're giving Robert Sala the tools to run his defense the way that he wants to run it. So, Carl Optus in the second round, I'm all in. I would love a trade-up for Linderbaum because then you get him on his fifth-year option because he's a first-round pick. So, you know, look, I'm not going to complain about any of these players potentially being Jets, but, I mean, I really didn't think there was any chance Linderbaum would fall out of the first round, but I keep hearing it from people I trust, and now, obviously, McShay's writing it on ESPN.com. So, We'll see how it plays out, but these are three players that couldn't make sense for the Jets with their early second-round pick, assuming they don't trade back into the first round and assuming you know, they don't trade those picks leading up to the draft for Debo Samuel, which I still think is a possibility. I think all three of these players, though, just to reiterate, would be big-time fits for the New York Jets. What I want to do now, though, I want to open it up, comments, questions, whatever you guys are thinking here. As always, Super Chats will, in fact, cut the line, and I have time here to do some calls. So if you want to join the show on camera, give your take on Debo, give your take on anything draft related or any of these three players I just mentioned, I'm going to put the link right now in the comments for those that are watching this live. So feel free to join the show on screen. I'd love to hear from some fellow Jet fans here. Should be fun. RKO says, Jake, don't forget to hit it. That's right. Hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button if you don't already. Nearing Crazy number ahead of the draft here. Uh, as of this taping, I'm at 14,847 subscribers. The goal is to somehow get to 15K by Thursday when Goodell gets to the podium to announce that the draft is open. I'll be in Vegas for the draft. Hopefully, we get to 15K by then. Let's keep going. Comment, questions. If you want to join on screen, the link is in the comment section. Uh, Jack says, what an wouldn't put Hill in package for Debo, get two stills. So you're saying you wouldn't trade both twos for Debo. Uh, so what would you do? Would you trade pick 10? Would you offer pick 10? Because I still think if it comes down to getting Debo Samuel or not, I'll take my chances getting a guy that had 1,800 yards of offense last year to help my young quarterback. Let's go Jets says, thoughts on Walker being the new favorite to go number one. Pretty wild. Yeah, very wild. Let's go Jets. And I think this is good news for the Jets. Because if Walker goes one, I really think Thibodeau's there at four for the Jets. I'm not saying it's impossible the Texans wouldn't take him, but everything I've heard from my sources down here in Houston is that the Texans are eyeing corner or offensive line with that third pick. Obviously, if Hutchinson was somehow there, they would they would take him, I believe. But let's operate under the assumption Walker goes one, Hutchinson goes two. It's the worst kept secret in the league that the Lions want him. And then number three, I think Sauce could be in play. Icky could be in play. Evan Neal could be in play. I think Thibodeau makes it to the Jets, and, and that to me would be an outstanding pick by Robert Sala and Joe Douglas. Let's go Jets says all three would be great fits for the teams. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't go wrong with Dean, Linderbaum, or Carl Optus. Keep it simple is confident that Linderbaum will be there at 35. I mean, that would be nice. Johnny C with a super chat. He cuts the line. If Ick, if Icky at four, does JD call Atlanta to jump Seattle for Jermaine Johnson? I, I, I doubt it, Johnny, because I think they would need to find a way to get a receiver, and they would need their picks to get back into the first round to get a receiver. So we'll see. Kevin C says, thoughts on Debo trade not getting done till draft night. I would be surprised, Kevin. I would be surprised. I think if a Debo trade gets done, uh, it gets done within the next couple of days. I don't think that this is going to be something that lingers to draft night because I think the Niners need to get their board set. They got to be ready to go. 
Denzel Mims Matters checks in. Thank you, uh, Denzel Mims Matters. Jake, hi. What do you think of Ron Middleton becoming a head coach? His energy and look gives me vibes of one. Pickens in the second round. Yeah, if they take Jamison Williams at 10, I think you would have to double up on wide receiver. I mean, Ron Middleton becoming a head coach one day? You know I'm all on board with that. Uh, let's look at Ron Middleton's career. He's been uh, in the league as a player. All right, He played in the NFL from 1986 to 1995. As a coach, he's coached in college. He's coached in the NFL with the Bucks at Alabama with Nick Saban, coached at Duke with David Cutcliffe for a long time. He was with the Jaguars for seven years with Doug Marone and obviously you know everything that's gone down in Jacksonville. He got out after 2020, uh, and then he's been with the Jets since last year. He certainly has paid his dues. Um, as far as him being a head coach one day, though, I, I don't know. I wish him all the best, though. I hope he's the Jets' tight ends coach for as long as he wants to do it. Uh, Shake and Bake. Jake, I saw you on the Twitter spaces. Great insight last night. Thank you, Shake and Bake. Anytime I get a chance to hop on with uh, the Jets Lounge folks is always a blast. V-Man checks in with a super chat. Never correct your opponent when he makes a mistake. So go Jags. Take Walker at one. Yeah, the Jags could do the Jets a favor, I believe, if they take. Walker at one, B-Man, because I think Hutchinson goes two. Texans are not going to take Thibodeau, I don't believe. And then Tibbs makes it the four. Richard Corey says, I truly believe Debo is already a Jet, and they're just waiting until draft night to announce. Uh, nah, he's not a Jet just yet, Richard. I mean, I, I like the optimism, but they're not going to wait till draft night to announce that. They'd want to get that announced as soon as possible. Because then if you're the Niners and you have the 10th pick, you want teams calling you about potentially making trades. Remember, the Niners don't have a first-round pick this year or next year. So let's say they acquire the 10 from the Jets. You want it known that you have that pick in case you can get blown away with another offer. Kevin C. says, boo Goodell. I'll be seeing Roger on Thursday. Can't wait. Former New York Jets intern, Roger Goodell. Shake and make Jake. Why is it the Jets have never gotten any compensatory picks? They have a couple. It just the, the better the free agent that you lose, the higher the compensatory pick will end up being. Uh Mary Lynn says New Orleans to number 10. D is only worth the Hill trade amount. Uh yeah, I mean, I I I think New Orleans could trade up to number 10. I don't think it's a, it's a lock, though. I don't think there's a clear consensus. He coached the Jets when Salah was out. Kobe, yeah, that's true. He was the interim coach for the game against the Jaguars, which the Jets won. And Middleton went for it on fourth down like every every time, which was awesome. Uh, let's go Jets, says. I think John Lynch is speaking today. We'll see what he says about Debo. I mean, I'm sure he's not going to say a ton, but the first question to John Lynch should be, how the heck did your best offensive player want out? Cody says, give us the Trek Hill package, and I'd be happy. I believe you mean the Tyreek Hill package, but yes. That'd be both seconds and pick 69, which is a lot, but you got to give to get. Um, let's see. Keep going with your comments and questions here. Shake and Bake says, any dark horse team that could sneakily acquire Debo. Any dark horse team that could sneakily acquired Debo Packers. I don't know how big of a dark horse they are, but we'll, we'll see. Um, Eagles saints. Detroit has that 32nd pick. Maybe they could offer that in their early second round pick to get it done. Uh, I'm not convinced though. John D says, what's the chance the jets trade the 10th for more picks? I think a lot of it could come down to what happens with Debo. What if they trade for Debo Samuel and offer the Hill package? I think they trade out of 10 and try and recoup some of the picks. So it depends on how the board breaks as well. I think the Jets are going to move, though. They're going to make moves, either into the first round or out of the first round. They're going to do some trading. Johnny C says, if Linderbaum and Dean are both available at 35, what do you think they need to draft first with the New York Giants and Houston between their picks if they want a chance at landing both? Um, I, I think they got to get Linderbaum in that scenario. I, and I, I just think Linderbaum's the steal there. He's the value. As much as I love N'Kobe Dean, he reminds me a lot of Jonathan Vilma. Linderbaum in the second round 
too good of a value, I think, to pass up if you're the Jets. Like, you you put them on your offensive line, and all of a sudden your O-line from left to right is George Fant, let's say, Lakin Tomlinson, Tyler Linderbaum, Elijah Barrett Tucker, and Makai Becton. Like, where do I sign? Shake and bake is tight end off the table for a late round selection. I don't think so. All right, let's go to the calls now. If you want to join the show, you can. We're going to go out to the Gus Buster Umbrella video call hotline. And joining us right now, live from his car, is Jets Jedi. What's up, Jets Jedi? How's it going, Jake? Love the show, man. It's awesome. I just pulled over to be able to call in a little bit. <laughs> I yeah. appreciate that, Jedi. Thanks so much. Yeah, no problem, man. Listen, uh, you know what? I might be in the minority. I don't want Debo Samuel. Uh, I don't want A.J. Brown. I don't want Tyreek Hill. I, like, honestly, these guys just want to go get paid. And you know what? And that's what the Jets did with McCagnin. Um, they, they paid all these guys, and they were just looking for a paycheck. I just want guys who want to be there, drafted by us, and build it the right way. We're not going to win this year in the AFC. So, I mean, why why put out all that capital? Number 10, 35, 38, 69, all these different packages. I, I just don't like it. Well, let me ask you something. When you say we're not going to win this year, like what is your expectation? Like no one's saying the Jets are a Super Bowl team, but you need to help your young quarterback. At some point, this front office has to win football games, and a number one receiver helps you do that and is a sure thing, unlike the, the risk of drafting someone. It is, Jake. Uh, I, I get that point. Now, this is what I see. I see Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, um, Josh Allen, uh, Justin Herbert, all in the AFC. Um, I think that the Jets can um, compete with them by building through the draft. I don't think it's this year specifically. You look at what our schedule is. We have the second hardest schedule in the league this year. And, you know, I don't want to be a pessimist by saying that. I want to try and be a realist. And and I think that, um, you know, if we see progress, like if we're in games, like one score games, stuff like that, that to me is showing progress. And I want to see that. I, I just, I don't think that, paying Debo Samuel, even though he's a fantastic player and he does suit our system. I just, uh, I, I think it's the wrong move personally. Well, he helps you win though. He's 26. You're not paying Zach Wilson a lot of money. You mentioned the quarterbacks in the AFC and look, that's all fair. But Zach Wilson was the second pick in the draft. Like the Jets expect him to get to that level of start of stardom. Like that's why you use the second pick on him. So if you develop him and he takes that leap, you're competing, and you don't have to play all those teams every week. Like, I pulled up the Jets' schedule for next year. Now, we don't know the order, but right. they have games against the Patriots and the Dolphins. Can they split? That's two wins right there if they, dare I say, actually win a game in their division. They got a game against the Bears next year. They got a game against the Lions. They got a game against the Jaguars. Uh, they're away. Those are home games. They're away opponents. Include the Cleveland Browns. We'll see if Deshaun Watson's playing in that game. Pittsburgh, right. what's their quarterback situation right now? Uh, you have obviously, you know, Seattle, what's their quarterback situation right now? So I'm not saying the jets are a playoff team, but I am saying that I think if they add some more talent to the off season, they've already had, and Zach Wilson gets better in year two, you know, this is a team that can go from a four win team this past year to, you know, maybe this is a team that could win seven or eight games. And then you're really thinking in year three of Zach Wilson, year, year three of Robert Sala, year four of Joe Douglas having a full off season. All right. It's time it's time to be a playoff team. So like you, you got to look at it. Like you're just taking the steps to get back to consistently being a playoff team. I hear that. And and you know what? I think that's fair. I think that, you know, I think that's a fair valid opinion um, by yourself. And, and I, and you know what, maybe, I, maybe I'm incorrect by thinking, you know, paying these guys that they're just looking for a paycheck. I just, I feel that it's, it's very, it's not in the characteristic of what, Joe Douglas's mandate was. He said, we want to tear it down and rebuild it. Well, that doesn't really, like, that logic isn't what he's saying now. I think, and, and I might be um, on the outside with this opinion, too, I think he's worried about his picks. And, because you look, look, his first draft is a, was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. Makai Becton, we'll see. <laughs> We're going to see on Thursday what they think of Makai Becton. Um, 
And everybody else in that draft was, except for Bryce Hall, um, was an absolute bust. Last year's draft, there's definitely way more potential. Uh, you know, you see the potential. I love Zach Wilson. I think his release, I think that the way he plays the game is just going to get better. Um, love Elijah Moore. There's the, his draft last year. I honestly believe, though, Joe Douglas feels his feet are to the fire with getting us a wide receiver that he needs to hit and draft on. It's much easier to just pick up a Debo Samuel with that 10th pick and pay him $25 million a year then go and put your reputation on the line and draft a Traylon Burks or Drake London or uh, Wilson or uh, Williams, which I don't think that they would do. But um, it, it kind of worries me a little bit that he is maybe waffling a little bit on what his strategy is to build this team. Good call, Jets Jedi. The thing I would say about Douglas right here is the reality is He's won six games the last two years. So he should be looking at it from a standpoint of we need to win more games. And when an elite talent becomes available, there's multiple ways to build your team. You know, you said you're concerned about them bringing in a Debo Samuel or A.J. Brown and they just want the money. I mean, people said the same thing about Stefan Diggs or DeAndre Hopkins when they were traded too. And those guys came in and helped their young quarterbacks get to the next level. If you believe in Robert Sala and he's building a team and he's, uh, you know, getting everyone to buy into the, the culture that he's trying to establish – then you got to trust that if they add a player that they already know in Debo Samuel, he's going to come in and produce playing in the same offense that he ran with San Francisco. So, you know, you just, you don't just mortgage your future, um, you know, for anyone, but Debo Samuel is like a one of one player in the NFL. So you, you have to be adaptable. This team needs better players. They need game changers. And no matter what they do in the draft, you're not going to find a guy with any of your picks. That's going to account for 1800 yards of offense like what Debo did last year. So, you know, if you believe in Zach Wilson, like you just said you do, you got to help him, man. Because that's what happened with Josh Allen. That's what happened with Kyler Murray. Like, get your quarterback weapons. Joe Burrow, yeah, he's awesome. He also has three 1,000-yard wide receivers, a stud tight end who's now on the Jets, and he had a 1,000-yard running back in Joe Mixon. So, you know, if Zach Wilson doesn't end up being the guy, none of this really matters anyway. So do everything possible to help him and give yourself a chance. And if you're Douglas, you invested the second pick in Zach Wilson, so you need to build around him and give them every chance to, to be successful. Uh, this super chat here comes in from Kevin. He says, we can't let the Jags snag Linderbaum at 33. If the Jags don't take Icky at one, that's their pick. We'll have to jump them to snag them. Also pay Debo for Zach. I, Kevin, I, I tend to agree. I think Linderbaum could very easily be the first player taken day two. So I, I, I almost would rather trade back into the first round just to make sure they get him than hope he somehow makes it to 35. I don't disagree with that at all. Aaron with a super chat. He cuts the line. Jets need to make a statement with an opening day win to get Debo, get KT. Let's end April with a good vibe. Go Jets. Go Mets. LOL. Uh, yeah, I would love Debo. I would love Thibodeau. I think that'd be a fantastic way to end the month of April. I agree with everything you just said there, Aaron. I really do. All right, let's go back to a fan favorite on the Gus Buster Umbrella video call hotline. V-Man joins us. What's up, V-Man? What's up? What's on your mind? Well, you know, this is the last call. I was like, look, I disagree. Like, Debo is ta Like, you need talent at the end of the day. Debo is talent. And if there's any, any that's going to know him, they're going to be the people that work with him. Like Mike LaFleur. Agreed. Agreed, V man. I agree. I think, I th and thank you for the call. I think that's a big, a big, uh, you know, aspect to this. The, the Jets' pursuit of Debo Samuel. They know the guy. All right. There's pictures of Robert Sala celebrating with Debo Samuel. There's pictures with Mike Lafleur hugging Debo Samuel after a big win that they had uh, during their years together. So uh, I, I'm with you, V man. That's that's why, like, if the Jets make this move, I trust them to figure it out. Like, I trust them to know the character of the player they're bringing on. Like, let's also be real here, right? The Jets were about to add Tyree Kill, and he obviously has a checkered past. So I think the character stuff is slightly overrated here, but I think they trust Debo Samuel to be good. YA says, the outside linebacker situation is hard. At what point do you think they should consider drafting a linebacker? I mean, second round could be in play. If N'Kobe Dean's there, oh, my God. Yeah, second round they could go linebacker. I think they might wait till round three for a linebacker. Troy Anderson could be around round three. Chad Muma could be around. Round three. I would be really surprised if the Jets don't end up taking a linebacker, though, with one of their picks in this draft. 
Primetime J with a super chat. He cuts the line. Most important offseason for the Jets is to surround ZW with threats. Take the next step. Package 2023 picks for Debo. Draft KT Sauce, Dean Brisker. Thoughts? Primetime J, I thank you for the super chat. Uh, I don't know if the Niners want 2023 picks. Like, if they're trading Debo Samuel and they're a win-now team, even with a rookie or second-year quarterback in Trey Lance starting for them, I, I mean, we could say trade future 2023 picks, but they're probably going to want picks now that could help them. So I, I don't think you'll be able to get it done without including picks this year, not next year's draft. As far as your mock of KT, Sauce, Dean, Brisker, um, if you get Debo, then yeah, that's a perfect mock. But I, I don't think that's a realistic mock uh, based on the trade proposal that you've outlined right there. Um, let's see. TT says, I need to see more than one good year to be on the Debo train. He was very good as a rookie as well. So, uh, the, you know, this idea that he's a one-year wonder, it's like, ah, hey, he was really good as a rookie too. In fact, here's some stats about Debo Samuel that I could I could pull up here. So Debo Samuel's yards after catch, so, that's yard, so his yak yards after catch per reception was 10. It's only the second time in the last 15 years a qualified wideout hit that mark. The first to do it was Debo back in 2020 as a rookie. So, like, he, he's produced when he's played. Simple as that. Nick says, what's up? Love your channel. Keep up. Keep it up. Go Jets. Nick, thank you, man. Appreciate your support. Um, George says, bigger need, safety or linebacker? I think safety is a bigger need for this team, George. I do. Even though they did sign uh, Whitehead, I still think for how Salah's defense runs, safety is a bigger need. Um, let's see. John says, I love my jets and love me in the NFL draft, but holy hell draft day needs to come and go. I'm exhausted on draft day speculations. It's coming, John. You're going to get your wish. The NFL draft is upon us. Picks will be made. Legacies will be changed three days, six hours, 36 minutes and 38 seconds from now. So get ready. RKO says, the question you should be asking, if we get Debo, will Flacco give up his number 19 jersey for the new Debs? It's a great question, RKO. It's a great question. A lot of people wondering, will Joe Flacco give up his number to Debo Samuel? Rich says, we're a really young team. Going to take flight. I hope you're right, Rich. From your lips to God's ears. Seamus says, damn, get those likes up. Yeah, hit the like button down below. It helps the channel continue to grow. Tub King joins us from the bathtub. If we don't land Debo, I would trade 10 to the Chiefs for 29-30. Imagine having 4, 29, 30, 35, 38. That's how you fix your team in a second. I, it depends what the Chiefs want to do that. They might look at it like we like the value of our board. We think we'll get two really good players at 29 and 30 and not have to move. I don't know if the Jets want to do that. They might look at number 10 as a chance to get a blue chip player that wouldn't be available later. It depends on how their board is. The New York 49ers. I mean, if the Jets added Debo to go with Salah, LaFleur, some of the other Niners players that are on this team now, it would feel like the New York 49ers, no doubt. If KT isn't there, do we take Sauce? If KT isn't there, do we take Sauce? I don't think Sauce Gardner's a Jet. I think they would go Iki Aquano before they would go Sauce Gardner. I really do. Or Evan Neal, for that matter, too. Breeze, do you think Zach Wilson's another Sam Darnold? God, no. God, no. I think Zach Wilson will be far superior to Sam Darnold. Zach Wilson already cleaned up the turnover problem. Sam Darnold's four years in. It's the same, same old, same old. Jose says, do you think Kyle Hamilton's better than Jamal? He's a different player than Jamal. I mean, he should be based on how they've talked about him. But, like, to Jamal's credit, when he was with the Jets, he was an, he was an all-pro. His first year in Seattle, he played well. He was a disaster this past year. I mean, the way they talk about Hamilton, he should be, but I'm not convinced. KT versus Sauce, give me KT. I need a pass rusher. But Tia says, what's your take on moving down from Tanif, no Debo? It depends how the board breaks. Depends how the board breaks and how far down they're moving. Jets Forever says Sauce is the best player in the draft, of course, and anyone the Jets don't take is the biggest bust ever. That's how uh, Jets Forever operates, as we all know. Aaron says ESPN reported Walker could go one. ESPN is not reporting that. The betting markets reflect that. 
Walker's now the favorite. Um, KT will be there at four, I believe, if that happens. Though You're right about that. I said that earlier. Thoughts on Troy Anderson. If he's there in the third round, that's a great pick. Jesus wants to know, hey, Jake, how long are you in Vegas for? What's the plan aside from the draft? Blackjack, Mahjong. No, there'll definitely be some uh, blackjack, maybe a little roulette. Plan to eat at some good restaurants when I'm not working. So I'm looking forward to being in Vegas. The last time I was in Vegas was uh, in September, and I watched the worst Jet game ever, the Jets-Broncos game, where they didn't score and got killed. Oh, that was terrible. Uh, if the board fell in a way where the Jets didn't take a safety, any chance they get Byron Matthew another call? Maybe, Johnny, but I think Matthew wants to play for a contender and the Jets aren't there yet. Hater says, what's up, brother? Been with you since the beginning and telling you the most optimistic I've been in ages, GM, head coach, OC staff, and young nucleus. Yeah, Hater, appreciate it, man. You have been with me since the beginning, and there's no doubt you should be optimistic. You should be feeling pretty good about where this team is at, but you know they have to get it right. That's what it comes down to. I mean, having all these picks is 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 awesome, right? We've talked so much about it on this show, really, since January, since the Jet season ended. We've been talking about the four picks in the top thirty-eight, but you got to get them right. Jose says, if we trade thirty-five, thirty-eight, and sixty-nine for Debo, would you take Hamilton at ten? I would not. I do not want Kyle Hamilton. It's it's not even a knock on Hamilton. It's just there's other safeties I like. All right, there's other safeties I like. Like, Lewis Seen, I think, is a first-round talent. Jaquan Brisker, I think, is a first-round talent. Dax Hill, I think, is a first-round talent. Like, even the year the Jets took Jamal Adams, all right? They also took Marcus May, but you know who also was in that draft class that's pretty good? Marcus Williams and Buda Baker. And those guys were in first-round picks. So I just don't think you take a safety in the top 10. I think it's poor resources. Jake, do you think a quarterback can go in the top 10, Panthers or Lions? I think Carolina's going pick it at six. That's what I think. What do we think of Kenneth Walker at running back? Maybe another Tyler or maybe Tyler Algier. I don't think they would take Walker because he's going round two, and I don't think they'll take him. Uh, Algier in the mid rounds. I'd love it. I think that would make a ton of sense. That's going to do it for me. Second video of the day. I got to run. I got a previous engagement here. So I appreciate everyone who took time to watch the show. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show. I'm on my quest to get to 15,000 subscribers by Thursday. When Goodell says the draft is open, I hope to make it to 15K. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button on the right-hand side if you don't already. And if you want behind the scenes, Jets, Texans, and NFL draft coverage, I recommend you follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. It's just my name. It's at Jake Asman. That is where... You could follow me. The link to follow me is in the description for this video. I'll be at the draft Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, breaking it all down, going live on YouTube after the Jets make their picks in the first and second round. Appreciate you guys for the continued support. Thanks for watching. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the second Jake Asman show of the day here on a Monday, April 25th. Have a good Monday, everybody, and I'll be back with more Jets content throughout the week.